Big tech and data both pose advantages and challenges to the 2020 elections. One of America's Emerald Robinson sat down with RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel to discuss the GOP strategy ahead of 2020. You say that the RNC doesn't really rely on polling. We're seeing some very interesting numbers out there from a generic ballot. Yep. So much so that even some critics of the president are saying, we're not sure how credible these numbers are because of the amount of disparity. I, I think it's really hard to look at polling right now without looking at the underlying factors in the poll. So uh, how many landlines are they calling versus sell? What is the sample? Um, is it how much plus D or plus R are you putting into the poll? Um, are you rotating the names? There's so many factors. You can really manipulate a poll to say what you want. And that's just a fact. It is too early right now. We don't know who the Democrat nominee is going to be. It is just way too um, far out to make any prediction based on polls that are happening right now. Um, and the polls that I've seen have, have flaws in them uh, across the board. So when we're looking at analytics, it is, it is more scientific. Our analytics were spot on in the 2018 midterms. They were spot on in 2016. And that is what we use to create our compass as to how we engage voters and also which states we should be investing in. Well, clearly the polls in 2016 were not correct. Yeah, but the analytics of the RNC were. And that's why when I was Michigan chair, President Trump did his last stop in Michigan. You know why? Because we had him winning Michigan. We were the only place, the RNC, that had him winning Michigan. Everybody else was saying, why is he going to Michigan for his very last stop? Well, he won Michigan by 10,700 votes. So our analytics were spot on, and that's part of the investment in the RNC that the RNC has made into data um, that the DNC is so far behind on. Well, in the 2020 election is going to be so reliant on big data, but also big tech. Yeah. And there are concern, big yeah. concerns amongst yeah. conservatives and Republican voters about big tech search engine manipulation, yes. voter suppression. How does the RNC deal with this? Did, is there any efforts you can do to try to secure well, we're big vendors. I mean, our clients of these um, platforms, of Facebook, of Twitter. So we are having conversations with them. We're not going to put our money into these platforms if they are not um, abiding by um, kind of a, a neutral playing field and, and putting Republicans up at the same level as Democrats. And we saw this with Twitter, where they pulled down Mitch McConnell's account uh, for something that wouldn't have even hurt a Democrat. You know, he put up protesters that were outside of his house, and we said, we're going to stop all ad buys on Twitter. Well, they reinstated his account. So we're going to have to be aggressive and monitor it and be loud about it and make sure that their users understand that we expect neutrality from these platforms, and they cannot put their bias into how they um, work for Republicans or Democrats if we're both clients of that um, platform. Actually, there's been a lot of creativity on the other side in trying to counter the president for 2020 already. Speaking of which, California. Yep. Gavin Newsom trying to get the president off the ballot by proposing this yep. tax return law. How does the RNC handle that as well? Well, Gavin Newsom has done something that's unprecedented. He has tried to change the criteria that's set forth in the Constitution as to what is required to run for president. It is unconstitutional, it's illegal, we're challenging it, and he's playing a game where he wants to make sure that the president's not at the top of the ticket, so he will suppress turnout for Republicans in those primaries in California that will determine who goes on to the general election. It is really a disservice to the voters of California to try and prevent the president of the United States from being on the ballot. So we will take this all the way, I believe, to the Supreme Court, because Imagine if every state started saying, you know what, we're going to change the criteria for what it means to run for president of the United States. It is very clear in our Constitution what it takes to run for president, and no state should override what the Constitution says. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube. And call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.